Another day with intense thunderstorms in North Georgia. Photos and videos coming in from our 11 Live Weather Impact community out there. And this video from North Druid Hills showing that heavy rain coming down. Torrential rainfall, the leaves of the trees blowing in the wind there. We had some impressive lightning photos coming in as well. Cloud to ground lightning, very vivid and also really loud claps of thunder. This photo from Midtown looking out towards Piedmont Park from Tim Huffman, one of our 11 Live Weather Impact community members and unfortunately some of these storms this evening on our Friday did cause damage. In fact, about 10 separate incidences in Cherokee County of trees coming down and some of them, like in this picture, came into a house. Our Cody Alcorn is out in Canton in Cherokee County tonight and has been speaking with the family who said luckily nobody was hurt, but you can see the tree came crashing through the ceiling here, through the roof and into the ceiling of this particular bedroom. So we're going to have a live report coming up at 11 o'clock tonight after the Paralympics on 11 Alive News. But luckily, live radar shows we are quieting things down earlier than when we saw things quiet down yesterday. Yesterday. yesterday at this time we were tracking some severe storms today everything peaked really from mid afternoon through about six o'clock this evening and they've been calming down since then still a couple of showers in western Randolph and Cleburne counties in Alabama but big picture shows we are quieting things down and we picked up a lot of rainfall in the last uh, 48 hours let's see if I can get my graphic to work here um, some of our rainfall totals have been three inches in a few spots so a lot of rainfall has come down and and a little bit of rain helps because we have drought, which has returned to parts of North Georgia. Here at the airport, though, in Atlanta, we only picked up three hundredths of an inch of rain. So we have one day left of the month of August, and we are still running severely behind on our rainfall, our rain deficit for the month, over three inches and as of yesterday it was the third driest August on record. I'll have to look at those numbers again but I think we're still in that third driest place without getting much more rainfall today. Big picture a lot of moisture working in off the Gulf of Mexico and Atlanta the next couple of days and in advance of a cold front will keep this pattern in the forecast for the weekend of daily pop-up showers and thunderstorms. So as you're trying to solidify that unofficial weekend of summer all your last weekend of summer all your outdoor plans we've got so much happening in the metro and all across north georgia know that there will be storms that could be a little bit of an impact on your outdoor activities now none of these days look like a washout by any stretch of the imagination today was also not a washout yesterday was not a washout but the thing and the nature about pop-up thunderstorms in the summertime is that when it rains, it pours. So these storms that will be moving in over the weekend, although not a lot of us get them, when those storms develop and move over your house, you could get locally heavy rainfall. You could get lightning, even a couple of gusty winds. Now, we're going to keep the temperatures feeling summer-like. We hit 95 degrees today, actually 96 degrees today. It's two degrees off our record for the date from 1954. 92 tomorrow, 92 on Sunday, Monday down to 90 degrees. These be our last 90 degree days for a while. As we get past Monday, I do expect things to cool down, but let's talk a little bit more about our rain chance expected for the weekend. The timing of it, Labor Day weekend storms will be in the afternoon and evening. So starting as early as about maybe noon or one o'clock, lasting all the way until about eight o'clock in the evening. The impact will be not widespread rain, but pop-up thunderstorms. So you see that icon there. It has the sunshine. It also has the thunderstorm. It's kind of how today was. A lot of us saw a lot of sunshine. A few of us got the rain. And when it rained, it was a big thunderstorm. What you need to do to prepare for the weekend storm chances is just be a little bit flexible and nimble with your plans. If you're going to be out at the pool, if you're going to be boating, doing tailgating this weekend, maybe you're going to Atlanta um, Black Gay Pride as well. Just know what the weather is, right? Have a way to get warnings. You can download the 11 Alive weather app, uh, rather 11 Alive app, and sign up for weather alerts there. And we'll notify if there's any severe thunderstorms that pop up in your region. So rain chances sticking with us through the weekend into early next week, but none of the days look like a guaranteed good chance of rain. Let's go through this hour by hour forecast track. Tomorrow we'll start with some patchy fog, kind of like today. If you got heavy rainfall, the winds are light overnight tonight. We have a lot of humidity in the air. The water 
water from today's storms is trying to evaporate. It just creates fog at the ground. We see this happen a lot in summertime. So we'll start off low and mid 70s in the city, outlying suburbs, upper 60s, some patchy fog in areas that got some rainfall today. And then quickly that cloud cover will thin out. We'll bring in sunshine and heating temperatures by noon. A lot of us will be in the mid and upper 80s and then topping out in the 90s. But once we reach kind of that 90 degree threshold, we start to see the storms developing. You notice at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon, the forecast track is showing some of those storms on top of parts of the metro, but a lot of areas are not getting the rain. So that will be the nature of the game for Saturday and even for Sunday. So they'll develop in the afternoon, peak through the dinner time hour, and then as we get closer to sunset, we lose that daytime heating. We'll start to see the storm coverage, the storm intensity coming down, and then we should stay mostly dry through the overnights for the weekend, which by the way, this weekend, we're getting closer and closer to our last eight o'clock sunsets here in Atlanta. Those happen middle of next week. There is an article on 11alive.com that Nicole Hartford wrote up today, so you can learn a little bit more about which exact dates that ends up happening. For Sunday, very similar. We start the day dry, warm, humid outside. Then for the afternoon, a 30% chance of showers and thunder storms and then Monday we will do it all over again. So I don't expect any of these days to be a washout, but like we saw today, it is possible that some of the storms could turn intense. So we're talking about the damaging wind aspect, a lot of cloud to ground lightning, the heavy rainfall, and of course, uh, like we saw yesterday, not going to roll out some small hail as well. There's a lot happening around town this weekend. Let's talk about the forecast for it. Now, if you are tailgating tomorrow morning before the Georgia game, or Clemson game, if you're one of those people. Uh, we're going to have a pretty good start. Now, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, they have the roof they can open or they can leave it closed. Regardless, as we get out of the game and you're walking to your cars or MARTA or you're walking to your hotel, there will be a few pop-up storms around at that point, but hopefully we can dodge those showers and storms happening where you are at the time you need to be outside. Now, Tour Championship today, they had to suspend play because of thunderstorms in the vicinity. They started play back up around 6.45 this evening. So it was about an hour and a half, hour and 33 minutes that they were not able to play due to thunderstorm activity in the area. For tomorrow, for moving day, round three, we've got... Uh, temperatures that'll be very hot and humid and again another opportunity for showers and thunderstorms. Now they monitor that chance of thunderstorms very closely. In fact on site there is a meteorologist working for the PGA. I talked with him on Wednesday when I was out there at Eastlake Golf Club and he definitely was concerned about storms this weekend. If you remember back to 2019 there was I think it was 2019 a lightning strike did strike about six spectators that were out there at the Tour Championship back in 2019. So whenever there is lightning, if you can hear thunder and you can't see the lightning, you got to move into shelter, move into a safe place. Underneath a tree is not a safe place. Now, afternoon tailgating ahead of the Georgia Tech game may also feature some showers and thunderstorms. We've got Georgia State. We're calling this, what do they call it, uh, the um, MARTA. Battle of the Marta, right? Is that what they would call it? I think that's what Reggie was saying earlier. Uh, you know, there's a slim chance there could still be a stray storm around early as fans are getting into Bobby Dodd Stadium. But I think as we get later through the game, we're definitely not going to see rain impacting it. So it would just be the tailgating would be my main impact window I'd be concerned about for Georgia Tech and Georgia State fans out there. All right, forecast track hour by hour. Big picture. There's eventually going to be a front incoming from the north, and that front will help to fuel a few more storms by Monday time frame. But bigger picture as this slides through, Behind it, there's a nice east wind that's going to push in a drop in our temperatures. Look at how it trends day by day. Today was our 64th day at or above 90 degrees. We've got three more to go and then say goodbye to the 90s, say hello to the 80s. I don't know if 90s are done indefinitely for the year. We average about mid-September for our last 90 degree day, but we're certainly seeing a nice cooler setup with more clouds and on and off showers for next week. Now, speaking of rain chances, we're watching three different systems in the tropics. This is a cluster of thunderstorms, a lot of tropical moisture off the coast of Texas. Low in chance of development, but this will bring 
more heavy rains on shore through the holiday weekend and could potentially lead to flooding instances. We've got two other areas we're watching there out in the open Atlantic, one of which moving through the central Atlantic has a 40% chance of development over the next seven days. Another tropical wave just came off the coast of Africa. That's a 20% chance over the next seven days. So we'll also be watching those, but nothing imminently in the tropics to be concerned about. I think as we get past next weekend, then we'll be watching some stuff around the states or the Gulf Coast. That's what some models start to show. All right, for tonight, we'll be seeing all the last of the showers ending. They're pretty much ending right now. It'll be a mild, humid start tomorrow morning. Watch for some patchy fog. Otherwise, tomorrow, partly cloudy, hot, and humid. We copy, paste, repeat with the storm chances. No widespread organized severe weather threat, but an isolated strong storm will be possible just because of how hot and humid things are outside. So can't rule out an isolated strong storm. Rain chance about 30% tomorrow afternoon. We'll keep it at 30% again for the day on Sunday. So once again, 90 degree days are back for Saturday and even Sunday. But as we look at your seven day forecast, there's the cool air coming in. We've got an east breeze, a wedge of cool air building in back to our cool front early next week once we go back to work. So 40% rain chance for Tuesday. As we get into Wednesday, Say Thursday temperatures struggling to get out of the 70s and we'll keep things in the 80s for next Friday as well. I'm meteorologist Melissa Nora with your 11 Alive weather impact team tracking that Labor Day weekend forecast. I'll have an update hour by hour for storm chances on your Saturday coming up tonight on the news at 11. You can also join our 11 Alive weather impact Facebook group and download our 11 Alive app. You can scan that QR code on the screen and download the app. Click the notifications on, that way you can be alerted when there's severe weather moving into your area.